about the series of tragic incidents taking place against my family, my son, and the rest of the family living in Green Street in distress. As far as I have noticed, police officers have not investigated the matter in proper and righteous matter, manner. They failed to collect the evidence from the crime scene and from the shops in the Green Street area and from the surrounding area. The uncertainty is building up among the Muslim community because police is not hearing our voices, is not taking any action against the culprits about what those hooligans have done to our family living in Green Street. It seems that if the Muslims are targeted, then police is not bothered about it. Our submission is to the police and to the authorities a fair investigation to be carried out by some impartial police officers immediately and the culprits should be brought to the justice as soon as possible. Wrongly framed charges against Malik Wasim Hassan must be withdrawn immediately. Thank you very much. The real cause of concern here is in a legal hand, if, if that one person or if that group itself were in the on bail conditions, if conditions were applied, then all their return inside that same house is a clear breach of those bail conditions. It's also something that the police needed to have enforced against. For them to come outside that very same house and then threaten the family again, that's also witness intimidation, something else that the police should come out and enforce against. For the number of death threats being made, and the balance of that should have been taken into account, given the various accounts from independent witnesses they lay bare to the, the weapons they were carrying. Now, each time that this warranted action, police action, the police haven't attended. That's, the grave concern is this, not only is there concern about the altercation, the lack of policing, and then the subsequent charge being applied. If, if this had resulted in Mr. Wazin being shot or being knifed, if this had resulted in him losing his life, would we have had the chance to sit here today, having understood what had occurred and in the sequence that it had occurred? How many of us would have been moved enough to come out and start demanding justice on this? That's the gravity of it. It's not small misgiving. His father would have returned here to bury his son. Uh, it is as great as that, because some of you will be aware, I'm a, I'm a youth worker. I used to work in the town for a number of years, in fact, more than a decade, as a youth worker in the Pakistani community in Green Street. And one of the things we've been saying to young people, and we used to say then, was you need to trust the due process. You need to have faith in the law. Yeah. Report crime. Become a witness. Yeah. Our concern is, is that this could spiral out. You could have young Pakistani men saying, actually, forget the police. We're just going to go for this gang. Yeah. We're going to get revenge attacks. And myself, and in particular, Zia, have been working hard on the ground to stop this happening. Because we don't want gang warfare. We don't want tit for tat. We don't want revenge attacks or killings. So what we can't understand is why the police and the authorities are not taking this seriously and that whether at the back of our minds is that this has been allowed to escalate, whether this has been allowed to continue to it gets to a state where things become more serious. We've always believed in being preventative about working at the beginning, yeah? trying to problem solve not to allow it to escalate to a stage where people decide to actually, no, we're not going to bother with the police, we're not going to bother with the authorities, we're going to take the law into our own hands. Now, if you look at the, the sequence of events that Zia's pointed out, that uh, the, the father of Wasim, Mr. Malik has pointed out, you can see where this is, is headed. So, which is one of the main reasons we've called this meeting, because we recognise how serious this could be if we don't begin to tackle it and get the police and authorities to treat it seriously. Uh, we are going to take some questions uh, towards the end of the meeting because I know there will be some of you who will want to raise your concerns as well. Uh, have we got the businesses here? We have. We've got uh, Emma. That's an RT from yours. It's really looking at your account that you saw happening. Yeah. And then also from your...
though some of our councillors may wish to kind of take notice of that, but you know, they maybe will not challenge the police around being undemocratic because that is not something that lots of councillors and elected officials will do necessarily. So it falls on people like us who work as advocates on behalf of the community and uh, on behalf of young people in particular to take up that mantle because we're not afraid to speak truth to power. I'm a youth worker, I currently work as a development officer up and down the country working with communities and advising communities in terms of how to hold police officers and authorities to account. We're now doing this in terms of the process involved with Happy Pasuna because we're holding Thames Valley Police to account for the murder of a Pakistani man just 300 yards away from here. It's taken us five years and we're still fighting that campaign. Meanwhile, there are other incidents and other issues like this that we want to hold the authorities and the police to account. Why is it that we are seen as continually being perpetrators of crime and therefore being over policed? But as soon as we are a victim of crime, the police don't want to know. And for us in particular, this case has, uh, has evidenced that in particular. I think we do need to question whether there's been any real reluctance in the police needing to and wanting to secure any evidence in relation to the first application and all the previous incidents outside the house. Now, we had a previous case, we got Mr. Shard back. Um, so if you sorry, I'm ever so sorry to put you through this. Can you sort of stand up so people can get a good case of the theories and theories of Freshly shaken from this problem today. But we, had a, we had a case with um, Mr. Shah here. Um, he went through quite a lengthy period of time where um, he and, and his family were racially abused. In the end, he was racially abused and then assaulted. He had his shoulder dislocated. He's actually waiting for, waiting for a, a, a keyhole surgery on her, if I'm not mistaken. The, the gathering of evidence that the police conducted at that time was almost as if they went out to all the local yachts, and I use the word very loosely but in the right narrative. They collected the evidence from the local yachts, and the, the trial that was surmounted against Mr. Shah was that in fact he was the one that assaulted them. It went to trial, thankfully, it, it, uh, it got it exonerated from that. What he done was went out to meet the major family that used to live in that area. The way I subsequently moved out, it turns out that the Asian family had, in actual fact, witnessed the assault on him. They were visited by the police, they did give an account to the police of the assault on him, yet the evidence wasn't submitted for the trial. Now, there does seem to be rather a reluctance on, or a need, on trying to secure evidence. And that, and this is a, certainly something that's replicated in, in this incident as well, a month down the road. Why is it that the officers haven't, haven't really been seen to be doing what they need to do? Had they gathered the evidence, had they read through the evidence, then they would have understood the obligation and subsequent uh, serious incidents that occurred, let alone the last incident. Okay. Um, at this point, we've got a number of things that we, we're going to say, and uh, I know we're conscious that there are people who are on their way from businesses who are also witnesses. Um, if there's any comments or statements that people would like to make now, uh, if you'd like to uh, stand up, your hands up, etc., um, make your statement, please. And if you could introduce and say who you are. Okay, uh, I'll be giving your name, um, Shabir. Well, uh, Assalamu alaikum and good evening to you all. Um, yeah. Hi. I'd like to, I uh, have uh, heard this story for the first time in, in this amount of detail and I became aware of it recently that there was some concern going on and particularly around the incident that we've just heard being described and um, I, I'm sure we'd all agree that from what we've heard from the top table today it, it is extremely worrying. It is not the sort of perception uh, or understanding of the way that we understand our police for the law enforcement agencies work in this country. 
We have a long tradition of working very closely and very successfully and effectively with our local police as well. Uh, there are, I'm sure there are many good stories to tell as there are some of the bad ones that we've heard tonight. And this tonight's story still, of course, needs to be counterbalanced by, as it were, the other side of the account. We haven't heard an answer of all of these charges or accusations or the statements, very strong statements that have been made up to like the failure of adequate policing giving protection to a family and a community in a particular neighborhood area where there seems to have been uh, something happening on a particularly large scale, on a horrific scale, uh, and a lot of people involved in this who were able to uh, help the police with their inquiries were there to have been inquiries and the kind of have been suggested. But I, I don't know, until, until we get some explanation from the other side as to what's going on, obviously we'll hold and reserve our judgment for a while, but on the basis that what we've heard is broadly speaking true, and I think therefore there is a lot of work to, to therefore take on in terms of building uh, a relationship, a better relationship with our police, which we would love to be able to do. And indeed one of the comments that uh, Sir Sakim actually made earlier on is so vital, so important, that I had thought about this for a while since I heard about this incident, that I know historically over the years we used to run, uh, I can't remember exactly what the title of uh, this uh, setup was, but let's call it for the sake of argument a police community liaison forum uh, kind of situation. When the Asian community in Iwakum was at the time maybe less than half, maybe a third of the size it's now, now it is. And I, I think probably the time has come for us to reconsider that. And my proposal for tonight, if that was acceptable to our friends and colleagues who are here tonight and others, that we actually resurrect that forum, uh, which will enable us to do all kinds of things, of course, uh, all kinds of things, uh, you know, to, to deal with the, the police matters within the community, to deal with particular concerns that the community has on an ongoing basis, so that we don't have a pent up, if you like, emotional state built up over a period of time with regard to certain things which are going wrong. And then by the time you get into that sort of frame of mind, as you know, it's much harder to come together and resolve matters. We still have to do it in a civilized way, we must do. We mustn't ever, under any circumstances, get into a gang warfare or retaliatory matters, or and I applaud our friends and colleagues who have just given us assurances that they're going around making sure that we don't get into that kind of gang war retaliatory. So I applaud you for that, and we must maintain that standard, and we need to rebuild our confidence. And maybe one of the vehicles that we might go away with tonight it is a proposal that we actually then set up an Asian Police Community Consultative Forum, which means, say, every six weeks or two months on a regular basis with our police friends and colleagues on, if you like, the same side of the table, where we can take up issues of concern on an ongoing basis and hear both sides of the account, which is so important to make sure that we have a balanced and responsible view of building strong community relations and relations between us and the police. And that would be my proposal. I think, I think that has to happen away from the current general malaise constructs that perhaps the police already have in place. And I will mention things like the IAG and the various now just explain what the IAG is. The IAG, 20 years ago, was very much born at the back end of any critical crisis or incident in, in the community. It stands for Independent Advisory Group. Uh, it's a, a group that the police I agree entirely. I think that the, 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 that is a, a, a different remit, a different purpose. Now, what I'm talking about is a broadly based, agent specific, if you like. I'm talking about agent specific for other colleagues if they felt that they needed to be, say, for example, BME, i.e., Black and Minority Ethnic Community Days, or we could go with either one. Like, uh, but it's a community based, a different purpose rather than the IAG. Like, like, yeah. And it, it is. Things like the various NAC meetings, which um, it, it needs to be something that's very much community autonomous, and the police need to be a bit more accountable to it. I think, having, having sort of casually spoken with a couple, a few people uh, before the start of the meeting, I'm pretty sure that what, what, what I have suggested is clear to people that what I have my your clarification is very helpful in that sense. Okay, um, I've also been asked to, uh, to invite uh, Sajid to say a few words. So, uh, Sajid, let's start. Hopefully, that's not the same. <coughs> but, 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 but
having a, a liaison group or consultative forum is, is, is very, very important to get this on the table. However, I think there are a number of things which are being not said. There are things which aren't being discussed. There are things which are perhaps confidential that are around police intelligence that is not being shared with us. And I do have a, a matter of concern regarding that. Uh, similarly, I, I do need to flag this up, is that I, I, I do need to raise the issues that we have, very severe concerns, and we've had this concern for the last five years since Habib's death uh, in this town, is the issue of police interference. The Independent Police Complaints Commission treat this quite seriously in terms of they see it as governance. So when there's an incident that takes place involving police officers, which questions their role and conduct, then those police officers need to be kept away, and the discussions, negotiations, the meetings that take place, we need to be very careful about. What we're concerned about, and um, no doubt this happened for this meeting and it's happened for other meetings, is that senior police officers, instead of spending time and resources on investigating the crime, for example, that took place to Wassim, are spending their time and their officers' time ringing up councillors, ringing up community groups, actually trying to discourage them from attending or finding out more information. Um, and I find this profoundly worrying because if there's a crime that's happened, police need to be using their time and resources to go investigate that time. If there is a crime scene, then evidence needs to be secured. It's police kind of operational practice. And what I'd like you to be doing and thinking is where are the guidelines for police officers to go and do this? We've got the Association of Police Officers, ACPO. There are guidelines that police officers, senior officers, need to be following in terms of uh, instructions and how they do this stuff. I'm not sure we've seen any kind of ACPO guidelines regarding how they consult with communities. However, it is a matter of concern for us that police officers are doing this. And sadly, in some cases, we've also heard of police officers who've made either direct or indirect threats to people in their workplaces and among them at home. Um, and both myself and Zia um, were, were warned and threatened by a senior police officer a number of years ago in this town after Habib died. We complained to the IPCC and the complaint was upheld. We won that complaint. And that particular senior police officer was moved subsequently. So, you know, we have got direct experience of what happens when you try and organise meetings, when you make a challenge, um, when you try and look for accountability. Sadly, there are people uh, in, our, in authority, and including the police force, who don't actually want this discussion to take place, don't want accountability, don't want transparency. And you know, we find that very, very worrying and concerning, given the fact that it's supposed to be police and crime plans, there are policies and procedures in place. We would like the police to follow their own policies and procedures. We would like the police to be aware of the fact that there is race relations law, there are anti-discriminatory laws as well that are in place that also apply to them. And if we feel that Asian communities, African Caribbean communities, minority communities are being disproportionately affected by a lack of policing, or disproportionately affected by stop and search, or disproportionately affected by deaths in custody, then believe me, we will call it out. We will challenge it, because that's what we've done over the last five, six years. And even when we were part of the structures here, the Western Poly Council or Bucks County Council, we would work and engage with those police officers, but we'd also challenge police officers. So early on in my time, police officers were suspended when they uh, harassed young Asian Pakistani people in the town at the end of the 90s. You know, so we've taken some severe action in the past. However, it seems we don't have a, an atmosphere, an environment where I think the police don't want to kind of sit down and actually talk and negotiate with us and it's been a very difficult period in particular over the last year or 18 months and I don't think you want to add Yeah, there is. I, 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 I'd rather throw out a call to all uh, the and I'm sure some of my colleagues will understand this. When the incident does occur in the community, and those of you that are 
are there as councillors or in a guise of some form of community dignity? When you say you received a call from the police, can I just please ask that you be sincere and honest if you don't know about the incident or anything related to the incident, just be honest and say you don't know about the incident. Don't be cajoled into the nobility of having a, a police officer phone you. <coughs> don't invent and don't sort of put yourself out there. If you don't know about the incident, be honest and say you don't know about the incident. Take your time to find out about the incident itself. And then if you need to, you, you, you say when you need to. What we had with the case around the scene was an awful lot of misinformation regarding what may or may not have occurred. Had I not stepped in, had Saki not stepped in, then I don't think there would have been any real truth finding going on. And I think we would have led to a stage where Wazi would have had either a knife put in, a bullet put in, and then everyone would have just believed a police narrative that was put out there. So I think Wazi was right to come to us, and I think they're right to challenge that. But amongst the dignitaries, I want to say that again. If the police contact you in the back, back of incident, if you sincerely don't know, just be honest and say you don't know. When you do find out, then let them contact you again. But please don't invent. This isn't about your platform. It's not about how important you are. It's about the community and the incidents in the community. OK, right. Um, if we could take any questions, please. Uh, if you just would like, want to introduce yourself and say who you are. If we keep the questions quite short and concise, please, because uh, there may be a few people who want to say things. Any questions, statements people would like to make? I've got the feeling that the police are taking less and less interest in the affairs of the community, particularly the Asian community, from in the last three or five years. And we've got more councillors in place, we've got more active people in the community who think they know what they're doing and what they're saying. There are a lot of people who think they are something, yet then more and more of these cases are you know, becoming apparent. So, if, do you think there's any reason for that? I think it's, you know, sometimes we mistake visibility for equality, right? You, know, you can have a situation where you have a number of councillors, but that doesn't mean that those issues are being challenged or being picked up. In fact, sometimes what can happen is those councillors give permission and legitimacy for discrimination to take place because those councillors don't actually say anything. Right? Now, there has been some changes recently in the last few years. We don't have a police authority anymore. Okay? We have a, a police and crime commissioner, some of you will be aware, and we have a police and crime panel. And one of the things we're going to be looking at is to, to make some overtures and contact the panel and the, and the Police and Crime Commissioner. Um, but prior to that, there were some councillors who were involved with the Police Authority. Um, there are councillors here today, and if they're involved with the police or involved in any kind of committees where policing is an issue, they need to be speaking up on behalf of the, of, of the community. Uh, I'm not sure that happens all the time. Right, any other questions, statements? Yeah, um, I'm a law abiding citizen and I respect all communities and obviously respect the police. But what I don't understand, we should have had one or two police officers in the back. And if they couldn't find time or they didn't want you to come, there must have been a reason. And you said there's certain cases the police actually didn't follow certain procedures. I wonder why they didn't follow the procedures which they should have. And, and also, the final thing, this problem we're talking about is rather, as Ms. Krishnan said, it's an emotional game rather than a problem solving game. So we need to know what actually triggered this disintegration between the Afro Caribbean community, which I clearly respect, and our Asian community. So, whether you know, the, the, this individual was at fault or the group of youngsters who kept picking on him again and then again, again and again. The, 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 the trigger or the precursor to this was that there was two cars parked outside the family house, making a lot of noise late in the evening, selling drugs, buying drugs, 
There was no flow of people from so the from, from those people. started due to this It yeah, started from that. Mr. Wazzy, on a number of occasions, and his brothers have politely, and I say politely, have asked him to move along. No one else has had the courage on that road to move along. Did the police call the police? They have been called call the police. They've alerted the police to what was going on. On this occasion, the boisterous nature of the two cars being parked there, music being played, people coming and buying drugs and all sorts. The, the front garden of the Green Street House is probably no, no broader than the building. Yes, it's, 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 it's no broader than this table. If, 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 if my living room is here and somebody's here, whether or not it's double faced. So what actually happened when the police turned well, out? Well, if, if, if I may just, just, just sort of reiterate, what was in there was asking to move along. They became rather abusive just in the in that, in that simple engagement. He then sort of said, well, look, OK, if you don't want to move on, I want to call the police. Now, that really irritated them. They did move on. Was he had left, returned some time later to his mum's house. But what they had done was laid in wait. As soon as he uh, turned up, he didn't even have a chance to come out of the car. And they, they, they literally attacked him. There was an altercation that occurred. He had his nose broken. He was attacked with a number of weapons. He had his car coming down, which, in actual fact, the forensics at the moment, and in the need for uh, 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 um, gathering evidence, they have it was threatening behaviour with GBH, which is obviously a criminal offence. Of course it is. Yeah. So what did the police actually do? Did, did, did they actually arrest with those uh, culprits? The family were told that the police were there, followed the, the group into the house that they ran into. Uh, of that group of 25 or 30, there was one, one arrest that was made and that bail conditions were imposed. But those bail conditions were clearly breached within a couple of hours when that same uh, cohort and that person then turned up back outside the family house. Again, the phone calls were made. They subsequently returned a number of times. Criminal damage has been done in the house. Uh, threats to kill, uh, threats to burn the, the, the family house as well. Police were called. It, 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 is, it is a misgiving in, in, in the way that police have attended to this. Now, the, the last occasion, he's turned up again, the same group have encircled his car, um, after he's gone out with some of the witnesses that have given them now as evidence. Um, and he's done the right thing to, to protect himself, he, he just made off from there, because they were clinging on to the car, holding on to the car. One or two have been flown off now, the charges that the police have levied, or rather, what I, what I will say to this, the police may in their defence say, well, we collected evidence and we put it forward to CPS. The CPS decided to go, go to charges. What I would question is, given that there was evidence over a quarter of a month that wasn't protected or taken, what was the capacity of the evidence that was mounted to CPS for the CPS instead of going for another further action, or for the police to uh, to put the the sequence of events together? What was the nature of the evidence that was presented to CPS for CPS to decide to go to trial? It's got to have been way for thin. It's a stronger case against the gang than there is against us in here. And I, I just don't understand why that's not gone through. Uh, in terms of the point that you've made, one of the things I'd like from this meeting is that we demand that the next meeting, that we have police officers in front of this panel. Because there are a number of questions that we would like to put to senior officers. Yeah, we've met, you know, with great respect, we've got the, the Canada the Community Diversity Officer here. But we've had senior police officers who kind of refused to meet us. And actually have refused to meet you. Because we put the invitation out to them to this meeting. I know it was short notice. But the previous meeting that we had at Operation Ribbon, which took place in September, some of you were with that, at that, they refused categorically to attend that meeting. They, they'd also refused to attend the meeting with Mr. Shah sat right behind you. So, you know, we're concerned that if we have a senior police management who are reluctant to engage with the community that they're supposed to serve, then for me that, you know, there's lots of questions about what confidence that we have in policing in the town, and Green Street in particular, and Castle and other areas, and about why they're not prepared to come forward and answer questions, because you're right. Okay. In a sense, you know, we've, we've raised a number of issues, and Shafiq pointed this out as well. Really, we want to hear the other side of it. Mm. We want to hear what the police viewpoint is. And I believe strongly that 
the police should be arguing this because we can't really defend the police, we're not going to do that here. Um, but they need to have an opportunity to put their side. So one of the things that I suggest that happens from here in particular is that we put the invitation very strongly to the police, to the senior police officers, um, that they come and, and kind of address the panel here and speak to yourselves directly. I had actually seen a meeting where the police constable was before it. And there was a meeting in Green Street School, and there was a police constable called John Taylor, who actually was a member of the panel. Yeah, yeah. So obviously, I'm, yeah, for that reason, that's why I actually said that. But if you're going back to John Taylor days, that's actually touching upon the same meeting. <laughs> In the old days, there used to be those meetings at Green Street, really, because we used to run. Okay? And there are the neighbourhood action group meetings that take place as well. I'm not sure how effective the Oak Ridge and Castle Group one is for this particular area. But you know, you were right, we need to have a set of kind of urgent meetings with the police regarding these incidents that have been taking place. Right, are there any other any other questions? So one next step is that we have. There is a petition. Right. Uh, it's on a clipboard. Um, we will be. There will be a press release of some kind. This will be going out into the public. Uh, I will do. Like when we establish, there's obviously something. Yeah. I'm working yeah. alongside with the, the family, and we're just in the process of having a, a very thorough professional standards complaint being upheld. They will certainly come out to investigate some of our misgivings with the police itself. And where best I can, I will be alluded to, to the findings of that. I mean, the, the future that we're, we're looking at is so that look, we're, we're family people, we're, we're, you know, we've got jobs, we do all kinds of stuff, and we, we set up this campaign, and we, we, you know, this is something that we do voluntarily. But one of the things that's now emerged that is that we, we need to look at say, setting up some kind of project or organisation that will actually take up cases and give support to the community. You know, we, we would like to train people to become witnesses. We'd like to train people in the community to know about the law. Right? So if something happens, you are equipped to deal with this. One of the reasons why sometimes police and people in authority, I won't just pick on the police, but people in authority get away with stuff is through our ignorance. Because we don't know better. And one of the things that we need to be doing, and we used to do with young people in particular, is to train and skill people up. So if something happens to them or their family, they know what to do. For me, that's really important. That's like being a citizen. It's good citizenship skills. It's life skills. It's something that we're kind of committed to. So on this point, uh, next year, we will be uh, relaunching a project. Uh, Zia used to be involved in a, in a group called High Wicked Community Advocates. I don't know if I'm still a local community advocate. I have been the last 12 and 13 years. So we're going to relaunch that as an organisation, so Zia is not on his own, uh, we've been supporting him. Um, we're going to be looking at volunteers, we're going to be setting up a, a board, and we're going to be looking to set up training as well, because we recognise that this is such a big problem in the community, that we need to build up capacity and train people. So, if you are interested, then please pass your name forward to either myself or Zia. Um, We've got a few finishing things that we want to say, but are there any other kind of questions or, or statements that people would like to raise? Well, you've got a few more councillors in here, actually. Are they going to um, look into it as authority from the council side and speak to the local police authority about it, all these allegations, and get the truth out of it, or are they just going to do nothing about it? Well, oh, if the councillors are here, and those of you who vote councillors here, if there's anything you want to do, I would say to those councillors, you need to be asking the right questions. Those of you who voted for those councillors need to be asking questions of those councillors themselves about what they are doing regarding policing and examples. I think that's can, I, can I come out again and, and uh, just uh, say uh, a couple of things? I think that uh, as far as the comment about the councillors is concerned, our councillors do speak, of course, where th there, there is an occasion to speak, of course, and the members of the public are often not there to hear the councillors to the question where, when, for example, only last week, I think it was last week, when we had the recent crime commissioner come and give a briefing to the councillors in the council chamber, went south of the chief constable, 
and, and the uh, commander and so on. And there, there were lots of questions being put by councillors to these people. Members of the public now they have to watch that. But I think away from uh, that particular scenario where councillors try to do the job that they can, I think the focus of this particular meeting, if I may, with you respect, say, is that in a, in, in a narrow legal sense of due process and natural justice, I think it's worth making the point again that I made earlier on, and I think other colleagues from the top table and from the audience have picked it up quite rightly, and it shows what a mature group of people who have got around it here who have come to listen to this, that we cannot make our minds up by just listening to what we've been told. We can develop all kinds of sympathy and understanding, a view in a general sense as to what's going on, and it's worrying. It's something that as I've said before, if 80% of it is true, it will be extremely worrying and concerning to us. We don't know how much it is, and if it is counterbalanceable by other things which are maybe operational matters with the police may or may not be able to tell us in detail on a blow by blow count, particularly if one person has already been charged with something in the same matter. So we have to be careful about due process, natural justice, and so on, but the concern that I think that we need to get away from the, this meeting tonight, in my judgment, is how do we try and make sure that we don't allow this sort of situation to deteriorate, come to this point on a regular basis where there's a community pent up, reasons for community pent up feelings to come together, where we begin to develop a, a distrust for the police, a lack of confidence in the police, or some critical situation, a critical viewpoint of the police, which takes away that important ingredient, if you like, of maintaining law and order situation on an even keel basis where the community knows that there is a law and order situation, there is a police enforcement situation which is fair and is there to protect all of us when we need them. I think the very basis of any civilized society and a fair society is that we all feel that we have equal amount of protection and safety from the police. Now, if that gets it's undermined in some way, that clearly from what we've heard tonight, that there is a reason why some of our colleagues and folk feel that has been seriously undermined by failures as we've been reporting or hearing about. We need to know, we need to know much more about these things and we need to hear the other side. And therefore I think if we keep repeating those sort of things again, I think that won't take us much further. I think the petition is one thing. I don't know what the petition wording is. What are you demanding from that petition? Is it just a purpose? But in terms of the practical action, I hope and I know that our police colleagues are here. They're listening to us. The press has been here. They've been listening to us as well. The message will go out. The police is hearing, hearing what we're saying loud and clear. They will take this message back. And our practical proposal is let's obviously tackle, try and tackle the immediate situation spoken about. That's very important in some useful way and we hope that the police can come back with some kind of response. Obviously we've got to, they've heard what has been said to them, they can go back, we don't need to give them time to think about this and come back. But on an ongoing regular basis the important thing is to make sure that we have a, a mechanism, a vehicle, a system whereby we are constantly talking with each other about issues and problems and ways of working together the community and the law enforcement agencies working in cooperation with a, a strong sense of togetherness, common purpose, cooperation, collaboration, and so on. So that these sorts of situations don't arise or are not allowed to de degenerate on this scale to this sort of point. So therefore, on a practical basis, I think we would suggest that if the audience would like to, would like to put it as a, I like to put it as a resolution, that we establish a forum call it the Asian Police Community Consultative Forum uh, to be set up as quickly as possible and if you would like to delegate it to some colleagues here, including the councillors who are here, to try and take this forward uh, and put, try and put that proposal into action in due course, I'll be happy to volunteer for that kind of uh, initiative if you like. Uh, and then, you know, we've got something to take away from the meeting tonight which hopefully will enable us to work uh, more effectively in due course. Uh, otherwise, we can go, sit here, yeah. go on talking about the same issues over and over again until it comes to But it's not I think very much so practically on the ground, we're, we're effectively working in that manner.
And these people have reported their concerns to Do you want to formally put that proposal to them? Yeah, let's, let's, let's just do that. Um, is it agreed that a uh, police forum is set up? Before you go further, yeah. as you said, the council, every council does speak up of it, the online. And did you call the local councils today for the cost of them and doing What do you call them? Yeah. What did they say? They're going to come or not? There's an email search that went around. A very detailed email. So email that's email. why you need to speak to your local council as well. How come they're not turn up to this meeting? And we do speak. Yeah, there's, when number, there's, there's a number of people call. that we spoke to. There's a number of people from the last week and a half. <coughs> I've physically gone around and visited. Yeah, I know, but personally, you much rather, speak to your local council. I'd much rather, excuse me, I'd much rather spend time with people that are raising their concerns with me. Practically, yeah, I then, work with no, those. No, practically, I work with those. Don't concerns. cuss all the council. And then, the, no, the, email, the, email, the email to the meeting, the email to the details of these concerns went around on a circular to them. The councillors are checking their emails. Yeah, that's fine, but no, it's not. You know what I mean? I just want to do something for the people. Yeah. Uh, that's fine, but obviously you need to first. You just don't say all the councillors don't do it, but obviously we'll just speak up. You haven't heard me say that, have you? Sorry? But yeah, yeah. You're calling yeah. saying, I'm a councillor. You know what I mean? We've had, we've had, there's been a period of time where... Yeah, but then mention their names, brothers. If you think someone's done that, mention their names. Don't mention all, all the councils. That's no I, think, I, I appreciate what you're saying. There, there, is, there has been a general culture, and if I look back over the last five years in particular, since 2008, I think we've had support. I remember the, the initial public meeting regarding the death of Happy Patsula. We had two or three councillors who attended that at Green Street. Um, but subsequently, if, if I judge people by their actions, we've had a number of public meetings to do with the death in custody case. We've had vigils outside the police station. Invitations have gone out to councillors. We've had meetings with the police where, again, councillors have been invited. And, you know, I tend to judge people by their actions. So it's good that we've got some councillors here today. And, uh, you know, I appreciate the comment that you've made. I think what Shabib said in terms of a, a need for a police forum one of the things he's asked for is like a resolution or agreement from here. Is there agreement from people in this room that that is the way they'd like to go forward? Can we hand up please to show support? Okay. Do people agree there needs to be a forum? Okay. That's kind of clearly kind of unanimous that needs to happen. Okay. I'm just going to round up the meeting and I would like to thank those people who have uh, sat here for the last hour, ten minutes as we signed the back forecast. Six. Would you would they would they also like like somebody from here to then coordinate that? Yeah. You know, uh, coordinate if, that? I mean, I mean yes, the proposal. If, I mean, we'll, if those people would like to kind of almost perhaps stay behind at the meeting, then perhaps we can kind of coordinate that. I know myself and Zia would feel very important that we have it, that any forum that's created is independent and has a sense of kind of independence away from the police, so they can actually hold them to account. Scrutinise them properly because I think that's quite important. So, so it's a good question. For a police forum, we need to have some interaction with the police. Would it make more sense to liaise with them first to see whether they're willing to do that, or it could be kind of productive? I think no. I think I'm not saying that you wouldn't have a. And that being said, do you see what I mean? I mean, other than that, it's very similar to what we're doing here, which is great. Um, but you know, it's bad results at the end. Away from here, we do interact with the police. We do interact with the police. But maybe the motion should be put to them. No, it wouldn't. It wouldn't. Would, 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 whether it's going to be, whether it's going to be basis. Do you understand? I mean, we've be. got the uh, community diversity officer here. Okay. So he's sitting here today. Yeah, so we, could, we will have some follow-up kind of conversations regarding. Um, there is a petition that's going around on, on the clipboard, and the petition not only talks about Wasim's incident, but looks at some of the other incidents that have taken place. So. Uh, Zorg's incident and also the concerns that we raised around Operation Ribbon. And what we're asking for, that there needs to be an independent inquiry into policing into the town. Now, that seems quite serious. However, just in the last few days, there have been pronouncements nationally that will impact on Wickham. So, we had a report from Lord Stevens, which was a, a commissioned report by the Labour Party uh, to look at policing. And one of the key issues that's been, ris uh, that's been uh, arisen from that has been the need to improve local policing and accountability. Uh, I've not seen sight of the reports come out today, but such, right? The other thing that some of you would have heard 
is the comments that the Why Attorney General, Dominic Grieve, made regarding corruption in the Pakistani community. community. And again, for me, in the context of that particular statement, whatever we do is very important. Because there are a number of allegations that were made, a number of 